on the line as well. Welcome. My name is John Hertel and I'm the Vice President of Large Market Business Sales for Bell Canada in Ontario and I'll be your moderator this morning. We appreciate your taking the time in your day to join us for this announcement. We've also got a teleconference bridge as I mentioned and for those reporters who wanted to listen in and ask questions I'd like to welcome them as well. Let me take a moment and welcome also some of the Lakehead representatives here in our facility in Toronto, including John Richardson, who is Vice Chairman of the Lakehead University Foundation. Also, Kim Tobin. Kim is, where did Kim go? There she is, hiding behind a monitor. Hi, Kim. And I'd like to also welcome from Nortel Networks, Mr. Ken McIver, Vice President of Sales. There's Ken hiding over here. Welcome, all of you. We have a great announcement for you this morning. We've got lots of, of people in Thunder Bay also who are ready to tell you all about it. Now, once they've spoken, we'll run a videotape that the folks in Lakehead have produced, which will show you some of the applications this technology makes available. Then we'll take questions from the media, first in Thunder Bay, then in Toronto, and also then uh, sort of accompanying the folks in Toronto would also be the folks who are on the line that have called in. Now we have copies of this videotape available for media upon request. Media will also have the opportunity to see internet phones in use at the conclusion of the news conference. And at the university, there's an office near you that's available. And for those located here in Toronto, we have internet telephones around the room. Lakehead University is just completing the first phase of migrating their entire network to internet protocol. Bell Canada and Nortel Networks are proud to announce our partnership with Lakehead, which we have named Achieving Conver Convergence Evolving Technologies. And I know that there's real excitement around the campus. Both the students and the faculty are actually chasing down our technicians as we speak to try to make sure that it's installed in their dorms first. The students are pushing our, tech not our technicians and asking them about applications and how they can best use this exciting new technology to get their job done as a student and working with their professors. We'll be showing some of those applications on the video. This is a significant milestone in convergent technology and it's important for all three partners. I'm going to turn the floor over to Dr. Fred Gilbert, the President and Vice Chancellor of Lakehead University. Good morning, Fred. I'd like to ask you to say a few words to the audience now. Thanks, John. Good morning, everyone. I, too, would like to welcome all the people here in Thunder Bay and in Toronto to this uh, important news release. This is indeed a momentous day for Lakehead University. By partnering with Bell Canada and Nortel Networks, Lakehead University will meet its current and future communications technology needs in this sector. Our agreement with Nortel Networks and Bell Canada was fostered by and is linked to the construction of our new advanced technology and academic center. And you can see along the sidewall here some information about ATAC. This is a project that was made possible by a $13.5 million contribution from the Government of Ontario Superbills Road Fund. And I'd like to thank uh, the Honourable Minister, Dan Newman, uh, Minister of Northern Development and Mines, for being with us this morning and representing the province of Ontario. This $44 million building 
will provide space and facilities to offer a superior technologically based education for our students. Nortel Networks and Bell Canada are making a contribution for equipment purchase and other investments related to this center and are establishing a continuing relationship with Lakehead University. The IP telephony project is one aspect of this relationship and the excitement that we all have is shared by our students and we have some of our students here this morning and they will be helping field calls from the media. Some applications of IP telephony will require others to catch up with us at Lakehead, but there are many advantages that will accrue on our campus. This convergent technology that combines voice and data will allow faculty and students to communicate more effectively outside the classroom. A particular asset for web-based teaching and learning, for group discussion, distance education, and medical consultations. What this agreement brings to Lakehead University is an opportunity to be at the leading edge of communications technology, to be a training facility for that technology, and to be able to demonstrate to the world that in Thunder Bay, at this university, we have an integrated system that provides us with a knowledge-based digital technological environment that is second to none anywhere in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. We're very pleased that our next speaker could join us this morning, and I know that he has to get away very quickly to another meeting right after. Dan Newman is serving a second term as the MPP for Scarborough Southwest and was recently appointed to the post of Minister of Northern Development and Mines and Chairperson of the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund Corporation. Welcome, Mr. Minister. Thank you, John, for your kind introduction. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed my pleasure to join you today in Thunder Bay. It's fitting that technology brings us together today. Much like the technology being announced today will bring even more people together. Our government has long recognized that access to modern telecommunication services and technologies helps foster community and economic development across Northern Ontario. The application of these services and technologies will enable the North to participate fully in the economic, cultural, and academic opportunities of the emerging new economy. By adopting these new technologies, Northern businesses, communities, and institutions of higher learning, such as Lakehead University, have been able to reduce the need to travel great distances to access their major markets and stakeholder groups. And I'm pleased to say today that the Ontario government has been a strong supporter of improving the telecommunications infrastructure across Northern Ontario. Through our investment in the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund Corporation, more than $33.9 million has been provided towards improving telecommunication services in Northern Ontario since 1996. Northerners now have the access to a broad array of information and technologies that will foster community and business development. The Ontario government is committed to the development of an innovative innovation culture in Ontario, to the fostering of strong communities and the encouragement of productive partnerships. And we are delighted that Lakehead University has taken a leadership role by partnering with Bell and Nortel to install voiceover internet protocol technology and North American first in their new advanced technology and academic center. And we are pleased to have shared in Lakehead's vision of establishing ATAC, a center of advanced learning and research in cutting edge technologies. Through Ontario Superbuild, we will be contributing $13.38 million towards making ATAC a reality. Once completed, ATAC will be instrumental in attracting students and key research scientists and will help Lakehead University become the university of choice in Canada and North America in the areas of high-tech research and development. And I'd like to thank Lakehead University and partners Bell and Nortel for the opportunity to share in this significant announcement and to congratulate all of your innovation and foresight in making the Advanced Technology and Academic Center and the Voice Internet Protocol a reality. I am certain this center will become a catalyst for education 
as well as economic, social, and cultural development in Northern Ontario in general, and here in Thunder Bay in particular. Back to you, John. Thank you, Mr. Minister, and I know you have to rush away to another meeting. We're just going to give you a moment to depart before we introduce our next speaker. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure now to introduce Cynthia Ward from Nortel Networks. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning. Thanks, John. To paraphrase the great author and technology visionary George Orwell, our humanity is only as good as our technical development allows us to be. And that's exactly the reason why we're here today. In the spirit of Orwell's vision, Nortel Networks is extremely proud to be working with Lakehead University in Bell Canada to deliver this leading edge IP solution, which will assist the school in achieving the promise it set forth when it was founded over 35 years ago. As the leader in building the high performance internet, Nortel Network's agreement with Lakehead University further demonstrates the company's continued industry leadership in IP telephony solutions. Moreover, it is yet another indicator of Nortel's interest in helping its customers protect their investments in existing infrastructures while also providing them with a clear path that enables their organizations to easily evolve and take advantage of the opportunities presented by today's rapidly changing technologies. As a partner, we are proud to fulfill our role in helping Lakehead University meet the challenges of today's higher learning facilities by integrating the internet into Lakehead's communications framework. This bridges the technology gap that currently exists between this university and others in Ontario, solidifying Lakehead's position as a leader in post-secondary education. We are, after all, in the information age. And this new internet telephony network is the heartbeat of information flow. Voice, data, and video, from student to student, professor to professor, between student and faculty. In the 21st century, the internet is the cornerstone to communication and communications has always been the foundation of learning. Nortel Networks has a long history in working with academic institutions to help educate our youth and facilitate the sharing of ideas. From the smallest primary schools to the most prestigious universities in the world, Nortel is dedicated to improving the technological capabilities of academic institutions of all sizes and enhance the learning experience for students faculty and administrators alike. But our role in this partnership is much more than technological. One of the most important aspects and closest to my heart is Nortel's agreement to provide sizable financial and technological resources to Lakehead's initiatives that support such valuable ongoing projects as teacher training, the Net Knowledge Program, and the establishment of regional training centers. We understand and support Lakehead's unique leadership role in reaching out to the extended community in northwestern Ontario. I'd like to thank all of you on behalf of Nortel Networks for allowing us to be part of your university's vision and success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cynthia. Our final speaker just before the videotape and question period is Terry Mosey. Terry holds the position of President Bell Ontario. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, John. Good morning, everyone. We are delighted that Lakehead chose Bell Canada and Nortel Networks to design, deliver, and host their IP network solution. Converged networks are the great enabler of the digital economy. We believe the advancement of leading-edge communication networks, services, and applications is profoundly changing the world where we live and work. IP telephony means self-reliance, simplicity, and increased productivity as well as immediate cost savings. I want to congratulate Dr. Gilbert and his staff for their vision and their determination to implement that vision so quickly. Thank you for embracing the leading edge technology that now positions Lakehead University as the first learning institution in North America to adopt IP telephony on such a vast scale. Bell Canada is honored to work with Nortel Networks to provide Lakehead University with a critical tool that will enable it to take control of its communication infrastructure and open up a world of opportunity for its students and faculty. The Lakehead Project is Bell's first collaborative effort with Nortel. 
and many more are planned as part of our commitment to provide innovative internet solutions to businesses, universities, and consumers through convergence and evolving technology. I am certain that your students and faculty will experience immediate <coughs> benefits from this installation as it opens the doors to new research and programs that build on the strength of internet protocol. We are leaders in IP telephony. Our commitment to customers like Lakehead is to help them be leaders in their field. And to that end, we have established this partnership with Lakehead and Nortel, which will ensure ongoing support in a number of ways. Beyond providing technical support in partnership with Nortel Networks and Lakehead University, we'll develop a unified network showcase, the first of its kind, a virtual learning tool for the world. We will also establish a research and training facility where we will train our technicians and those of our partners so we can further the growth and expertise of IP telephony. IP telephony promises a significant growth opportunity for the communications industry and untold benefits for our customers. I believe Lakehead University has made a wise investment for today and tomorrow. I'm certain that many public and private institutions will follow where Lakehead University chose to lead. Thank you. Back to you, John. Thank you, Terry. And as promised, we have a videotape which shows you some of the applications the university is now enjoying with internet protocol. Run the tape. University will soon be home to North America's largest internet protocol network. Built by Nortel Networks and hosted by Bell Canada, the infrastructure delivers the ultimate in connectivity, combining voice, data, and multimedia information over one converged network. Located in the geographic center of North America, Thunder Bay has historically been a meeting place and a communications hub. Lakehead University is a catalyst for educational, social, economic, and cultural development. Home to 6,200 graduate and undergraduate students, it is a comprehensive university with quality academic programs and superior research opportunities. With a campus backyard that includes the Canadian Shield and the world's largest freshwater lake, Lake Superior, the university is well positioned to serve the needs of people living in remote communities. Recognizing that technology, applied research, and communications will drive future progress in our knowledge-based economy, the university has partnered with two world-class companies, Nortel Networks and Bell Canada. The installation of a state-of-the-art IP telephony solution will provide the Lakehead University community with convenient connectivity throughout the campus. The solution involves more than just making a telephone call over the internet. It builds on their existing system by migrating the network to an IP-based infrastructure that totally integrates voice and data information on one common network. Lakehead students, alumni, and faculty will use this single network to effectively collaborate on research, work together on projects, and talk on the phone, regardless of whether they're in a laboratory, a dormitory, or the cafeteria. More than 2,000 internet telephones are being installed and will be located throughout the campus in classrooms, student residences, and the new Advanced Technology and Academic Center scheduled to open in 2003. This new building, funded in part by the Government of Ontario's SuperBuild Growth Fund, as well as several corporate partners, is designed to meet the increasing demand for university education. What this agreement brings to this university is an opportunity, in fact, to be at the leading edge, to be a training facility, to demonstrate to the world that uh, at a location in Thunder Bay, we are providing an integrated system uh, utilizing succession products, utilizing uh, uh, Nortel network servers and routers, and an integrated system that in fact provides us with a knowledge-based digital technological environment that in fact is second to none. 
The implementation of the IP telephony solution demonstrates Lakehead's leadership among Canadian universities to use technology to overcome geographic boundaries. It will now provide the most modern communications tools and systems to significantly enhance the educational experience throughout the vast area of northwestern Ontario and beyond. The integrated system incorporates Nortel Network's state-of-the-art data and voice technology, together with Bell's reliable carrier service, to deliver a very efficient network that is simple to manage. Where there were previously rows upon rows of equipment to manage two networks, there will now be several small boxes from which the whole system can be monitored and maintained. As for the student experience, they will no longer have to plug in both a phone and a computer. One jack is all that is required. Some of the network applications will include online course registration, e-business functions, unified messaging, and video and audio conferencing capabilities. The functionality of IP telephony provides anytime, anywhere mobility and accessibility to Lakehead University resources on the telephone or web, or any wired or wireless device like a cell phone or portable computer. It enables Lakehead to celebrate distance as an advantage. The relationship with two leading edge companies, Bell Canada and Nortel Networks, comes at a time when Lakehead University is preparing students to be successful in the digital economy. This solution converges Lakehead's telephone and computer network so that future research, teaching, and training will not be limited by geography, but provide a natural backdrop to an academic environment that values student interaction and connected learning. That's great. Uh, I really want to congratulate the Lakehead team for such an outstanding job on the video itself. Well done. I think you'll agree that the videotape does a great job of showing how simplified the new network is for the university and how flexible it will be as the university expands in coming years and why we're all so excited about this installation. Now that concludes the formal part of the presentation and we'll take questions from the floor. We're going to start first in Thunder Bay and then we'll come back to uh, Toronto and, for the, and also for the folks joining us by teleconference. Uh, what I'm going to ask is that if you could please uh, uh, step up to the microphone where appropriate uh, and introduce yourself, uh, give your media affiliation before asking the question. Then I'll try from this end to steer the question to the appropriate person on the team. I'd also suggest if there was someone specific uh, who has presented this morning that you'd like the uh, call answered or the question, I should say, answered by, please indicate that. And we also have several IP specialists at both ends, and uh, we think we can an handle uh, pretty much any question that you might have this morning. So perhaps I can uh, turn it to the team in uh, Thunder Bay first and uh, take the first question. Hi, I'm uh, Jim Kelly from the Chronicle Journal, and this is directed to Fred. Uh, Fred, the um, uh, Nortel and, uh, and uh, Bell are partnering in this. Uh, you know, how much money is involved in, 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 uh, in, this, in, in installing the system at Lakehead University? The IP telephony system is, is one component of uh, the hardware that will be going into uh, operation at the university. The other components relate to uh, servers uh, making, in effect, the advanced technology and academic center, the, the nerve center, as it were, of this campus. So there's a lot of technology that will be placed in that building as it's under construction. So we're looking at uh, a, a total of over $6 million in hardware components that uh, are going into the university. So the $6 million is, uh, is, is coming from Bell and Nortel? No, no. What I'm saying is that the, the value of the commitment that is being made in technology at this university is greater than $6 million. Great. Uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, next question, please. Hi, I'm Glenn Summit. I'm from Thinner Bay Television. Uh, I'll direct this one to as well. Um, this says it's phase one of the project, and then um, I think it goes up to phase four. If I could just put a quick timeline to uh, what the various stages are, when they'll be uh, the 
plan is to have the system fully operational, with the exception, of course, of the new construction uh, by sometime this summer. We have uh, the first phone sets in place now. We will have the residences, of course, uh, uh, have these installed. We would anticipate by the beginning of September that the entire campus will be functional and that the only remaining item will be the ATAC building itself. And then what, what will the ATAC, will that be where everything's housed or and based on? What will happen is that we will migrate our uh, CTRC functions, in other words, our communication functions, our uh, computer functions into that building. What we're doing is temporarily housing the uh, servers to uh, support the IP telephony in uh, another area of campus. So we'll be ready for students by September. Absolutely. In fact, there will be operations uh, taking place within the next few weeks that students will be able to access. And the web-based uh, registration is one example. Great. Thank you. Do we have another question from Thunder Bay? Great, thank you very much. And uh, I wondered. Uh, Sorry. Hi, my name is Becky. I'm a student. Um, I was just wondering if you could tell us what the costs are going to be inflicted on the students themselves. And, uh, um, and also, uh, how this will work in residence. Will the students be using their own phones or will the phones be provided? The, the phones will be provided in residence. Uh, they will be part of the residence fee. Those fees have been worked out in conjunction with the students. All fees are uh, done at the table with the students. In fact, the additional costs related to this are, in fact, minimal. And I think you'll find that the, the benefits that will accrue uh, far, far surpass the uh, very minor increases in fees. Thank you, Becky. Now, I wonder if uh, I could turn it, please, uh, back to the room uh, in Toronto first to see if there's any question, and then we'll go to the folks online. Okay, let me go to the folks online. Do we have a question from anyone on the uh, teleconference bridge? Yes, our first question is from Evans Research. Mr. Albert Dewu, you may now proceed. Okay, merci bien. Uh, yeah, I'm overdue. Did I hear Kim McCarver was in the room? Yes, he is. Uh, Ken, good day. Um, uh, you know, my beat is sort of technology. Can you give me a rundown as to what's been announced from the point of view of uh, voice over IP telephony products, uh, which, which what hasn't been quite the um, focus of this thing, but um, what, what are the new products out there and how can I see them? Uh, Ken's just going to work his way down to uh, a microphone. So if I can uh, just understand your question, you're looking for more of a, a general, uh, quick summary? Yeah, I, I want to know what products are being deployed and, um, uh, you know, how we're controlling the, I, the flow of the IP packets. Is it on the, you know, is it on the accelerator? Is it on the meridian? Okay. Uh, what I might uh, suggest, we'll turn that question over to Dan Grigatti, and uh, oh, Ken is yeah. here to support. Dan is... Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, going to try to uh, give you an answer here, Dan. Okay. Um, hi. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, okay, Dan. Yes, I think I've been put on to you before in the past. We uh, have spoken before. Yeah. Uh, as it relates to Lakehead, the products that uh, we're demonstrating there and that we've announced, uh, it's a succession CSC 1000. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's uh, if, if you're familiar with the Meridian technology, it's a distributed solution of that over an IP infrastructure. For the folks that have had a chance to see the video, uh, we demonstrated that infrastructure basically consisting of Passport 8600s and business policy switches. These are the devices that can deliver a high performance network. Uh, in terms of the IP phones, um, not sure if you had a chance to see them. We have some here in the room in, in, in uh, Toronto and at Lakehead. Obviously those phones can be used with the, uh, the Meridian that's IP enabled, with uh, the BCM product, and Succession CSC 1000. So there's the advantage with IP telephony. You can use the same products uh, across the spectrum. Uh, as well as uh, we made reference to some soft phones uh, over the, the PCs. So those all those products can be demonstrated. Now, uh, how many sites do you currently have in clients for 
the, um, the unique part of the solution, which I understand, would be the succession, or? Is this as it pertains to Lakehead? Yeah, is, is, um, is, is Lakehead, is Lakehead a, a first reference account for any of these products in Canada, or have they been broadly deployed throughout your customer base already? Well, definitely the succession CSC 1000 product. Uh, in the initial phase, we're going to roll that out to about, I think it's 400 uh, students uh, and faculty members across the campus. So that is the first deployment, and there's obviously others uh, that we're working on. Um, definitely, the, in terms of IP enablement with the Meridian, uh, we've rolled those types of products both internally and externally. Oh, okay, look, unfortunately I wasn't able to make it in the tour room. I, I, I think you've um, answered my questions, Dan, in terms of what this is new. So we've now got a first, uh, we've now got a first uh, reference account for succession. Is, right. Is, is what I understood that. Okay, Ken, Dan, thank you very much, and I look forward to getting uh, the full press kit. Thank you very much, Dan. Great, and thank you very much for your question. Uh, do we have another question from the folks on the line? We do have another question from Kelly Management, Ian Angus. You may now proceed. Hi, it's Angus. <laughs> Ian, how are you? Hi, Chad. Um, I want to get back to the dollar issue that was announced on the first question, asked on the first question. Can we get uh, some a dollar figure for the contributions of Nortel and Bell Canada in you know, products, services, and cash, this project? And how much are you actually putting in uh, from your side? Hey, let me, uh, if I may, uh, steer that question uh, back to Dr. Gilbert as a start, and then uh, we can add any pieces to that as well, Dr. Gilbert. Uh, some of that information is proprietary at this stage. Uh, all we can say is that uh, we feel that we have a very, very fine partnership with uh, Nortel Networks and with Bell Canada, and the really important portion of this agreement is the long-term benefits that I think will accrue to all the parties. Those are related to uh, the training activities and the research and development activities that uh, will take place at the Lakehead University campus. Is it reasonable then to assume that Lakehead wouldn't have been able to do this if it hadn't been donated? Uh, no, I wouldn't make that assumption. Uh, we had plans to move forward in the area of telephony. Uh, it was advantageous to do it in connection with the Advanced Technology and Academic Center, so the timing was really determined by the, uh, the government funding. Okay. Thank you, Ian. Uh, another question, please. We have another question from McLean Magazine from Dan Hawileshka. You may now proceed. Oh, I was wondering if someone could tell me what the data transmission rates are like over this network for um, uh, data and video and how it compares to a DSL line, for example. Hey, uh, Dan, can I turn that question to you? Dan Grigatti from Nortel Networks. Uh, sure. Um, in, in terms of uh, what we're announcing and the infrastructure that we've uh, placed uh, at Lakehead University, uh, if you think for, for a moment, the, the network uh, basically is an Ethernet network with which uh, I think predominantly everybody uh, in the industry is starting to understand, and IP runs over top of it. Um, when you start to add things like voice, uh, voice as an application isn't something that requires a great deal of bandwidth, but um, as from time to time we've seen uh, on the... Uh, on the, on the video conference here, uh, doesn't put up with a great deal of delay. So uh, the infrastructure that we put in uh, is, is one that's high performing, uh, basically layer three and layer two switches that can take the voice, uh, the, the voice piece from uh, the IP packet and prioritize that. So in terms of bandwidth, uh, it's, it, it would just, it would be just like a standard um, data, any type of data network that you put in place, except it has the intelligence to prioritize that uh, this particular IP packet is voice over, say, someone sending email. So it, it, whether, you know, we've had some demonstrations here in Toronto where we are running IP telephony over a DSL connection, and that goes back into our corporate site where we have a similar type of inf infrastructure in place. So you have an Ethernet network with a, a voice 
uh, protocol that runs over the top of that? Is that uh, basically it's IP running over Ethernet. Uh, but the thing is, when you run an application like Voice, uh, it's basic. Basically, the, the the components within this network is intelligent enough to distinguish voice over, say, data or, or video or other applications. So because of that, we can prioritize it and uh, treat voice with a higher quality, thus giving you uh, voice quality service that you would come to expect. Speaking of voice quality, I don't know if any of this press, press conference was done over uh, uh, an IP, with an IP uh, uh, protocol. I, I'm just wondering, can you give me a subjective uh, reading on the voice quality of this system. Is it as good as an ordinary phone, or does it sound yes. like a... it's as good as an ordinary phone. Hey, thanks. Great. Thank you for the question. Next question, please. Our next question is from Evans Research. Mr. Ed Valdez, you may now proceed. Um, I guess this one this might be for Mr. Gilbert. Okay. Um, uh, what, what we've seen IP uh, deployed at other educational institutions People have talked about um, some of the benefits, such as reducing costs. I, we have seen scenarios where people are saying it makes us more easily to turn our dormitories into hotel rooms, uh, <coughs> distributing ads. Um, in, in terms of the, is this all cost, or have you identified some benefit, uh, uh, addition benefits? I don't know, such as lower lower moves to ads and changes, or or you've been stressing very much that this is uh, the plan of new technology which is going to be a benefit to students in, uh, in and of itself. Are there any f financial gains to this solution? The, the primary benefits at this stage are in the educational functionality and I think that uh, those are, are very serious in terms of what they will do to us uh, uh, in terms of some potential savings as we move some of our educational function outside of the campus. In other words, it provides us with uh, connectivity that uh, is hard to put a, a price on, but certainly has a, a measure of uh, savings and uh, of cost benefit to the institution. With respect to blowing any advertising over this system, that is not something that uh, we are planning to do at this stage. Certainly, if we were to move in that direction, it would be done in conjunction with discussions with our students and with our faculty. Thank you, Dr. Gilbert. I was just going to ask uh, Sean, uh, Sean Winter from Bell Canada, if you would make a, maybe perhaps some general comments on the cost effectiveness from the administrative point of view, et cetera, of the new technology. Definitely, John. Uh, in this scenario, we can now take two diverse organizations and bring them together and actually converge the workforce. Uh, today, Lakehead has uh, got a telecom group that's responsible for uh, voice applications, voice servers, PBXs, voicemail, etc. And then they have a totally separate group responsible for their data infrastructure, which includes email, uh, desktop connectivity to the uh, to the PCs, and so on. Um, if we look at these two distinct groups, they are somewhat identical in their function, although the applications are slightly different. Uh, this uh, this new technology enables us to bring those two groups together and uh, provides uh, you know, very uh, easy moves, ads, and changes, uh, which is a daily occurrence for moving telephone sets around. We, we empower the students to move uh, phones or the faculty to move phones around without engaging other groups within the organization. Great. Thank you, Sean. Additional questions? We do have another question from Kelly Management from Ian Enkin. You may now proceed. Actually, it's John Riddell this time. Uh, did I under understand that you will have all the phones in the campus on the new system by the fall, and would that include decommissioning your present PBX? Uh, Sean, maybe again I could ask you to comment on the schedule. Certainly, yes, that, that is the intent. Uh, the first uh, first roll that's happening right now in a limited deployment, and uh, very shortly, uh, as uh, Dr. Gilbert mentioned, there will be a rollout of uh, 550 telephone sets, uh, which will happen probably by the early summertime, and uh, the remaining sets will be deployed by the uh, by the first of the uh, uh, season next year in September. Uh, very good. If I can just slip in another question. You mentioned about that students and faculty, faculty will be able to take their phones around the campus. How will you be handling locating 911 calls? Yeah, great question. Um, it, 
the profile will follow the, that telephone set and uh, databases can be updated within the organization so that uh, those persons can be tracked down throughout the, uh, throughout the facility. Thank you, Sean. Additional question? I have no further questions for the moment. Okay, I might uh, just go back to uh, Thunder Bay first to see if at the university we have any additional questions. And finally, to the room in Toronto. Well, uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attendance and your interest in today's announcement. Uh, those present in Thunder Bay are now invited to try for themselves some of the applications available. And I would declare this announcement officially adjourned. Thank you again. That. I'm also going to leave a message on this client to show you how a person with a PC could actually use the client on their PC, this is the student, to listen to their voicemail as well. Aside from their going into and logging into their mailbox, they can actually use the client on the PC. So, I don't know if everybody's ready. Okay. So what I'll demonstrate first, the little headset here, I'm going to leave a voicemail for this phone over here, which would be somebody or a student in the, the campus. I've got it set up on speed dial, but you can actually dial the numbers. The extension of that phone over there is 7694, or 7964, so I'm going to actually pick up the phone, you're going to hear it, it's a regular phone, ring, go dial to Seven six nine. Seven nine six four. Nobody's gonna pick up. We're gonna leave a message for that phone. Well, there's a number. So we're going to pretend this is my engineer, and I left him a message this morning, so I'm going to leave him another message. Steve, is Tom calling. Uh, just waiting for you to respond to my first call. I'm going to mark this message urgent. So I tag the message as urgent. I'm going to hang up. All of a sudden, I got a new mail, and you notice that it's hurt, marked urgent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play both messages for you now. This is the message I left this morning for my engineer, Steve. Good morning, Steve. I just wanted to get a hold of you this morning because I wanted to find out what time you wanted to come over to Lakehead University. Please give me a, and please give me a call right away. Okay. This is the second message I left. As you watch me. Steve, it's Tom calling. Uh, just waiting for you to respond to my first call. I'm going to mark this message urgent. So there you go. Now, if you wanted, I could do the same thing. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to demonstrate the same thing that we just did on a phone. Logging into the voicemail just like I would. Normal phone functionality, except for it's running on my IP network. So I got to dial into my mailbox. Logging incorrect. Please try again. <laughs> Let me try that again. Five nine six. Please enter your mailbox. Password. Login incorrect. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I figured out the password. So the same messages that are in my mailbox here. So I press play. Good morning, Steve. I just wanted to get a hold of you. Same message. I've already heard this message. I can delete it. Message one, deleted. It'll delete it off of my inbox. I'll show you that in a second. Steve, I'm calling. Uh, just waiting for you to respond to my first call. I'm going to mark this message urgent. I've already listened to it. I go back to here. This is my inbox. Send and receive. Just going to refresh the messages I've gotten. So now you can see that the mailbox is synced together with the inbox on the student's voicemail. So now let's do a real neat thing. Let's call off net out to the real world from a PC. I'm going to call my engineer Steve. I'm going to call him at his office number. So what, what I want you to do after I leave this message, we're going to go over to Steve's PC, and he, this is a real live mailbox, this is his email, we're going to see the message I'm leaving for him in Brampton appear on his PC, he's currently got a connection back to our network over the internet using VPN technology. That's because he's here. <laughs> Steve, I want to thank you for coming down to Nortel and helping with this uh, demo. Can I hang up? Now, if you want to actually see this, if you walk over there to that laptop, that's Steve's actual PC. Where is he in Toronto? He's that's connected to. Not have to actually read it to be able to hear the message that uh, that Tom left across the internet. Just like you open another. Sorry. Just double click it. It shows on those because he's not in it tells you the time it calls six seconds. Six seconds is the time to place a call. And from here, you can always call it. If you reply to that, you'd be able to click. Okay, so the way application really is, you can set up mailboxes for a collaborative worker of students or faculty here at the university. They can all have mailboxes, and they can access those mailboxes either through telephone, like you normally get access to them, or they can access them from any internet access point anywhere in the world. They could be sitting on an island in Tahiti with internet access, and they can retrieve their voice messages. That's the, uh, that's the ubiquity of the system. So it allows them to communicate and to leverage the fact that the internet is everywhere, right? And to have those messages being able to be picked up. Uh, the other advantage of this is that once you've received that voicemail, right, but you have this voice, you know Steve has this message, he can take that and forward it to anyone, even if they don't have a message. He can forward it as a wave file in their email. And they could open it and play it with their real player or whatever they have to use. And so it allows them, you know, one of the biggest challenges with uh, the voicemail system is it's only as good as the voicemail system on touches, right? You can't send voicemail to your colleague in a different uh, office, right? Because he's not on the same voicemail system as you. So this way you could send it again. So now I know I have voicemail on my soft client. Anyone want to give it a shot? 
it's just telephony. There's no. The great thing about IP telephony is it's the same as the regular telephony. It's just as easy to use as using any other phone. If you want to call a local pizza parlor or call your mom at home or something like that, it's just a phone. You don't have to do anything. Pizza? It's 346. Local? Yeah, it's local 346 7976. So I can make long distance calls that cost Long distance calls that don't cost anything require gateways on both sides. This time I'll turn it down. <laughs> Sorry. So, so what happens is, when the university uh, when you look at outreach programs, we can put a gateway on the other side. It doesn't matter how it could be in Australia. As long as there's internet connectivity, you can make calls over the IP network. So, because it's going to go out to PSTN gateway because your sister doesn't have an IP or an IP gateway. <laughs> Okay. So this left the message. Now, if you want to hear that message, you can just log into this. As if it's logging in. I don't know. You ready to see the stuff coming? Oh, here we go. All right. So we're gonna actually. I left the message on the stuff coming. So did John. It's calling me back. I'm going to check my mail. So all I do is the same thing I would do on a regular phone set. I'm going to open up the receiver, and I'm going to check my inbox. So this inbox is right there. It's going to call. Now it's going to ask me for my mailbox number, which is 7976. It's going to ask me for my password. Five, eight, nine. I did this